Episode 18 of Friarin, Beyond Journey's End begins with Friarin, Stark, and Fern observing Auburst. Friarin tells Fern she should consider getting her first-class mage certification, but Fern doesn't believe she could get one. Then, she explains why a powerful mage must accompany them to the northern plateau. During a carriage ride to Auburst, Friarin wants to develop a strategy before taking part in the first-class mage exam. Fern's curious since she knows Friarin's powerful enough to handle any test. Friarin delves into what makes mages strong in her eyes. Additionally, Friarin mentions 11 individuals defeated her in the past. Elsewhere, Kraft protects a mage named Yubel from several travelers. Kraft interrogates Yubel because he believes she's responsible for several bandits' deaths. Yubel doesn't deny his claims and informs Kraft that she plans to tackle the first-class mage exam. Kraft recalls Friarin mentioning the exams a while back so he departs to Auburst. He hopes to hear how her journey's been with Fern and Stark since they've last met. At the Continental Magic Association in Auburst, Friarin and her comrades receive intel about the first-class mage exam's regulations from a female staff member. The woman tells them they'll need specific certification to take the exam, enticing Friarin to leave. However, Fern attempts to reason with Friarin, but Friarin's not budging. Friarin presents Fern with her holy emblem, which catches an elderly man's attention. Later, Friarin tells Fern that she surprised people understand what her emblem represents. In a flashback, Friarin presents the emblem to Himmel, Hyder, and Eisen. They don't understand its significance, so Friarin tells them it's an item that proves she's a mage. Himmel tells Friarin they know she's an incredible mage and shouldn't let the emblem clarify that for her. In the present, Fern shares a similar sentiment as Himmel, so Friarin pats her on the head. Our heroes visit the library. Friarin delves into the history surrounding mages and their experiences during previous first-class mage exams. Additionally, she confirms there are not many mages left nowadays. She acknowledges how she encountered more mages when the Demon King's attacks were at an all-time high. Then, we receive a brief montage of Fern and Friarin's training for the exam. On exam day, Friarin and Fern attend the first test meeting held by its proctor Janot. While Janot explains the rules, a fellow proctor analyzes several exam participants with his female colleague. Friarin intrigues the gentleman the most because of her manner. Janot bestows each participant with a bracelet and says they'll be entering three-person teams for the first test. Friarin observes her bracelet and is a bit flustered by her teammate's ferocity. As for Fern, she's paired up with Yubel and a random gentleman. At the first test site, Janot explains the first test's rules to the participants. He says each team will receive a cage with nothing inside it. They must capture a bird, still, and place it inside the cage. Additionally, they must bring this cage to this location by sunset and all their party members must be present. They're allowed to do anything they please before the time limit. However, they cannot leave the testing grounds, otherwise, they'll fail. Friarin's mildly concerned because her teammates are lying and can are still fighting with each other. Friarin interrupts their banter and suggests they get to know each other better. After introducing themselves to each other, Friarin suggests they find a wild still. We witness several snippets of our group exploring the testing grounds. Unfortunately, Lawain and Ken can't seem to get along. During this stroll, Ken asks Friarin if they can take a break. During the break, Friarin asks Lawain if she's strong. Lawain admits she's stronger than Ken, but wouldn't want to be in a situation where Friarin's her opponent. Friarin tells Lawain to scout the environment and to return if things get dangerous. After discussing with Ken for a bit about leadership, Lawain returns and tells Friarin she found a still. Ken and Lawain use their magic powers to trap the still to Friarin's shock. However, Friarin tells the girls to take cover. The still breaks free from Lawain and Ken's clutches, and Friarin tells them that still is known for being incredibly swift creatures. 
After more bickering and observing shenanigans ensue, our heroes rest for the night. Ken notices Fryerin's missing and wanders the area to look for her. Suddenly, a giant bird attacks her. Before the bird can severely injure Ken, Fryerin saves her. Fryerin noticed Ken call a lion's name out during this incident and wonders why. Ken admits she despises the lion and admits she's cowardly and isn't at her best during critical encounters. We receive a flashback of the time when Ken was having trouble learning her first flying spell. Ken asks La Line to note Ken's strengths to her. Ken admits she can only grow when people praise her. La Line acknowledges Ken's incredible work ethic, observational skills, and cute demeanor. Ken finds the final comment appalling, resulting in La Line kicking her off the mountain. Fortunately, Ken's flight ability kicks in. In the present, Ken tells Friar and she knows La Line can be rough but she appreciates her company for inspirational reasons. Ken informs Fryerin about something she noticed during her debacle with the giant bird. The episode closes with Fryerin finding this intel fascinating since it could help them nab a still. The episode review. After exploring numerous towns and bidding farewell to Sane, our heroes finally arrive at Auburst. Unlike previous endeavors, Fryerin and her friends don't waste time exploring Auburst's locales or interacting with its townsfolk. Instead, we get straight into the heart of this episode, being the first class mage exam, and boy, we received nice intel about its rules and rich history. Based on how the exams are structured, it appears it'll go the route of other classic shonen series, where Fryerin and Fern will tackle distinct tests until a few participants remain. While the first test seemed uninteresting at first, the latter half of this episode proves otherwise by revealing the still, bird creature, species are faster than the speed of sound. Thankfully, Can, Lawine, and Fryerin seem to be doing well as a team. Speaking of Can and Lawine, many viewers will appreciate the tidbit of information we receive about their history together. While more information regarding their magical roots would have been great, what we receive in episode 18 should pique one's interest in their characters. The same can be said about Yubel's character, too. Overall, this was a fun and informative episode of Friarin, Beyond Journey's End. I'm excited to see what Friarin and Fern will do to assist their temporary comrades with this bird-capturing test.